Yeah, I'll have you know this badge is from Walmart. I have been authorized. I've been authorized. I'll tell you what the badge is all about in a moment, but uh, I just want you to know I have it. I'm bona fide, certified. That's right. The new sheriff of town. If y'all get out of line. All right. So you need to just keep things, keep things under control, all right? Under control. <laughs> yeah, Paul, you are out of control, my friend. You're just out of control. Well, I tell you what, it's so, so exciting to be in God's house. I love, 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 love the presence of Jesus. Yeah. In fact, I just might be a little addicted. <laughs> I tell you, I just love getting, uh, getting inebriated with the presence of Jesus. And uh, Jesus and the spirit of prophecy was strong. And then on, on Saturday, how many went to the prayer on Saturday? Prayer on Saturday. I just, the spirit of joy and and faith and hope was there. It was just awesome. So for those of you that don't know, we have prayer on Saturdays at God 411 that's on North B Line at 9 o'clock on Saturday. So you're welcome to come. And uh, it's just, just fun. It's, it's really cool. So today, please don't spontaneously applaud. But today, we're on the last of the series. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are awesome. I, I mean, I was afraid when I said that. Everyone would finally say, finally! Because <laughs> uh, it's been a long series. There's nine through the Spirit. We combined one lesson and put two of them together when we, when we talked about gentleness and kindness. But this is the last in the series on Rosetta Stone for Kingdom Churches. And all of you, I don't think there's one of you here. Yes, there might be two of you who haven't heard this. So here we go for those three of you that have not heard this. I had a vision once in my life. I did. It was a powerful vision. And in front of, in this vision, I am with thousands of people in front of a courtroom. This courtroom had at least 70 steps. It was, it was amazing, maybe hundreds. And we were all anticipating. We were excited because we were hoping that our name would be called. And finally, my name was called. Tim, woo! I was so excited that I ran up every, every fourth step. I stopped and I danced before God with all of my mind. I mean, ridiculous. You've heard white men can't dance? <laughs> well, no, this one can't either, but I still did it with all my heart. And uh, I still do it. So once in a while, you're going you're gonna to just have to look the other way. <laughs> because I get excited about Jesus. Just turn your face. I know, it's terrible. But, uh, so I danced before the Lord every fourth step. And when I got to the last step, there were two marble eagles on either side. And when I got there, they came to life. This is a vision, okay? So it's just like television. Things that are different can happen. But this, this vision... These things came to life, they picked me up and they flew me over my realm of influence, my area. And I could see it, and the word of God came to me and said, I will show you great and powerful things, but first you must learn the languages of the kingdom. And so he brought me back down to the first step and I saw that on every step was written a word, and the word was the name of languages. And the words were love, joy, peace, patience. So you get the idea, that the deep things of God, the deepest revelations from God are what you and I classify as the most simple love. Oh yeah, I got that, that, that. No, you haven't. No, you haven't scratched the surface when you're comparing it to the love pro. Who's the love pro? Jesus. He's the pro, right? He loves all the time, every time. Yeah. So we got some learning to do. We got some developing to do. It's a, it's really a yielding because it's called the fruit of the what? Spirit. So it's the produce of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's producing it. We just have to get out of the way so that the Holy Spirit can be produced in our life. But you'll notice that the first few are feel goods, man. Love, yeah, yeah. Everybody say love. Love, yeah. Joy. Joy is really, you know, one of my favorites because I, 
I believe that you can't have church without joy. If you have church without joy, then forget it. You might as well have a board meeting. <laughs> so we got to have joy, right? See, these are the feel good, love, joy, peace. Everybody wants peace. Peace, brother. Right? All those are the feel good. Those are the spiritual uh, uh, couch. Yeah, Lord Jesus, this is so good. But you'll notice that the fruit of the Spirit starts developing. They really do. And even coming, I, I, I got closer to this last one, even the one, even last week's. But this last one, I was like, Lord, do I have to preach this? Because as you're developing in your spiritual life, you're going to realize that it's kind of like when you were a child. When you were a child, you spoke, spoke as the child, the Bible says, and, and it was like, oh, you're so cute. What does a baby have to do? What is a baby responsible for? Eat and poop. Is that right? Sleep, eat, and yeah. That's their responsibility. They're, they have no responsibility. And as, as believers, we really like that stage. We believe it's the eternal stage. But you got to read the word a little bit closer, right? Because it's not the eternal stage. We as Christians, we go through a development process toward the, to where the Lord treats us like a child. He protects us. He babies us. He feeds us. He blesses us. But he really is trying, not trying, he is really developing us to where we start becoming a man or a woman of God. And the fruit of the Spirit develops responsibility. Everybody said responsibility. What does responsibility mean? It's the ability to respond correctly. The ability to respond correctly. So here we go. Are y'all ready? You might get the, we're, we're, I'm usually the inspirational guy, hopefully. But sometimes, sometimes it's going to be pen and paper time. And this might be pen and paper. I don't know. You judge. But you're going to take some, take some notes, at least in your heart, because the Lord's going to tell you, hey, this is time for you to take control and to enforce. It's time for you to enforce some spiritual law in this certain area. It's time for you to take control. Because this last one of the fruit of the Spirit is called self-control. Galatians 5.23. It says in verse 23, it's listed the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, gentleness and self-control, there is no law against these things. Exclamation mark. Woo! I love exclamation marks. When I'm writing, sometimes I put too many in there because if everything's an exclamation mark, then nothing is, you know? Have you ever heard someone say, wow, this hamburger is awesome, and these fries are awesome, and man, this is an awesome day, and wow, do I look awesome today, or you look awesome. And then by then, you're like, mm, yeah. awesome, whatever, right? Exclamation marks are the same way. Ho! Oh, how are you today? <laughs> but in this case, there's an exclamation mark because it is a proclamation and it's cool, but he doesn't stop. Are you ready? The verse next to it. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. I don't know if you if you read the same verse I read, but that's violent. I mean, we were talking about peace. Peace. Let's go back. Rewind, please, to the peace, joy, and love. You're talking about nailing something to the cross? No, Jesus did that. What are we we're talking about? Us nailing our passions and our sinful... Us? To us? Uh, I don't 
like it. That's uncomfortable. I feel very uncomfortable. Well, the Bible doesn't really... He, 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 it's, the Bible's not politically correct. In fact, the Bible doesn't always... This might bother you, but the Bible doesn't always go along with your doctrine. <laughs> Sometimes the Bible messes with our doctrine. And please understand that we... 100%, 1,000%, we are saved by grace. Amen. But I'm going to tell you that the Bible says, it talks about when in Romans chapter 10, and this is not on the slides, so don't even try to follow me, but Romans chapter 10 talks about that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that God has risen Christ from the dead, we shall be saved, right? Amen. Saved. Boom. But then the next verse would bring kind of an accordion to this verse because it says, for salvation is made unto righteousness. Interesting. I'm saved. So that's all I have to That's done, right? Yes, it is done. But now you've got to walk out your salvation unto you. What? I have, I have to walk? Yes, yes. Now you're going to apply what Jesus did on the cross. Now you're going to apply it to your everyday living. So I'm going to promise you something that if you get this into your heart, your life is going to look different. You're going to start interacting with people different. You are going to control yourself. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's going to produce something in you to where you're different. I don't know about you, but I hope, I hope that you're different after you got saved, that you're you don't talk like you used to talk. That you you don't think like you used to think. That you're you're you don't kick the dog like you used to. You know what I mean? I mean, it should change everything about you. If it hasn't, then maybe it isn't. Okay, just me. All right. So, so here we're looking beyond identity into ownership. There's something about this whole thing that uh, you would think that royalty, like royalty, have you know, they're in control of their lives, right? They're royalty. They're in charge. But the truth is, is that with royalty comes responsibility. If you're royal, you don't, you generally just go down to McDonald's because you have people to tell and there's an organization and it, you just, you lose some of your freedoms. Why? Because you're royal. Nothing wrong with McDonald's. I'm saying that there takes some communication with, hey, can, is this going to work in our schedule today? And so some people who were born into this, this great, uh, wow, look, I'm wealthy, I'm rich, I have all this power, so I can do what I want, right? No, with, with, great, with great power comes great responsibility. So it's super important that we understand the restraint of royalty. This is when you abandon the myth of reckless freedom and you see that your sonship demands responsibility. I'm a son of God, so I just don't do whatever I, I feel like doing or what I want or what I think, what I think. No, it's what does God think? What does the kingdom represent? What does the word of God teach? Right? Now I'm representing not just myself, I'm representing the kingdom of God. Does everybody remember when we had that WWJD? What does it stand for? What would Jesus do? I like that, but I'm going to change it today. I'm going to change it to JWWWT, which Jesus, what will we do? Because now you're in partnership, you're in coordination with the Holy Spirit. Remember, this is the fruit of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit is producing self-control. So we ask Jesus, what, what do we do in this situation? What, what will we do about this? On Thursday... I hope she probably was going to watch this on Facebook. But anyway, on Thursday or Wednesday, we were down in the valley. We had been with our grandson. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for healing him. But he, was, he had just got out of the hospital after being there five days. And, and we were out to dinner at a nice restaurant. And I got a call. I'm in Phoenix, and I got a call from Payson. Your dog is barking. You're, this lady doesn't even live in my neighborhood, but she said I'm going to call the police. She went right for the, you know, right for this, man. She, and to be honest, I, I was irritated because, you know, it wasn't one of my close neighbors, someone that, you know, I felt like might have influence. I, it was someone 
who must have been walking by or something. But it doesn't matter. Jesus, what will we do about this? Because, see, I have a responsibility. I'm not just Tim McDonald. I am Tim McDonald, but I'm not just Tim McDonald. Now I'm a, ch I'm a child of God, but I'm also pastor in a small community. Right? I pastor in a small community. And then I realized she's right. It's very irritating to be by a dog who's barking. So Jesus helped me because I was about to be stupid. Do you understand? I mean, really, I needed the help of the Holy Spirit because my perspective was not correct. So knowing my identity, but also knowing my ownership. Who, who am I? Who do I belong to? I'm not my own. I'm the child of the king. I'm going to respond to this daughter. She's God's daughter too. And I'm going to respond to her with respect and gratitude. Boom. Cool, huh? Because I'm a child of God. Okay, so self-control. The Holy Spirit won. Yay, Jesus. Come on. Hey, if the Cardinals score, score football, touchdown. Come on, what will we do? Jesus won. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Aren't you so glad that your pastor didn't embarrass you? Yay. So as ambassador of Christ and representative of heaven, we do what best reflects the kingdom. Okay, so here we go. We're going to jump into some word, Proverbs 25, 28. All right, let's go a couple of slides because I want to read this together. Anybody back there? We got back there. That's all right. Who needs it? All right. Okay, so Proverbs 25, 28 says, A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Okay, so I want you to close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to read a paragraph, and I want you to do what this paragraph says. Okay, close your eyes. We're talking about your soul now, okay? Imagine your soul is a city. Your soul is a huge, thriving metropolis. And as a Christian, your city exists within the state of the church and the kingdom of God. That though Jesus is king of the kingdom, he's placed you as the steward or the mayor of your city. You can either be that city that's set on a hill shining as a beacon of kingdom-mindedness, or you can be a slum, a city with broken walls and vacant buildings. All right, you can open your eyes. So, we're talking about the city of Seoul, not Seoul, Korea, the city of Seoul, Cormia. We're talking about the, the core of your heart, your core, your soul. We're talking about your soul, the city of your soul. You are the mayor. Jesus is Lord, he's the king of the kingdom, but your, your city exists within his kingdom and you're the mayor. He's given you the right to be the mayor. He, you gave your heart to him, and when you gave your heart to him, he's Lord, but now he's made you steward. And if you're faithful over little things, he's going to make you rule over much. And the first thing he wants you to be faithful of is yourself. I mean, how many people have I met that, man, they want to do great things for God, but, but their gifting is not as strong as their... No, their character is not as strong as their gifting. They can sing like a bird, but they can't be faithful to their wife. You know, they, they, they might have administrative gifts, but they also like to scrape off the top a little bit. You know, those two things just don't go together. And when, when your character's not as strong as your gifting, then God can't trust you with greater things. It's just that simple. Before we can touch the world, before we can, before we can change the city, we have to learn how to become Christ-like. I'm not saying you have to be perfect before you're going to win the first person to, to the Lord, because that's not the way it works. But you do have to learn to submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit to live an overcoming life. So, today we're talking about self-control, and it sounds a lot, of, a lot like self-patrol. So, we're going to talk about being the patrol officer on soul patrol. To be on patrol, it means to watch over. To be the one that watches over. 
And so, when we're talking about the city of soul and the city of self, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about three distinct areas, even though there's a lot of different factors when we're talking about living an overcoming life. But we're going to talk about the soul, the mind, will, and emotions. And using the city metaphor, we're going to be talking about the media outlets of your city, the businesses of your city, and the families and sentiments of your city. Those are the three things we're going to talk about quickly. All right? The first thing we're talking about is the media of your city. Your mind is the media outlet of your city. Now, what's the media outlet here in Payson? There's all kinds. Believe me, you've got the Payson Roundup, you've got K Mod, you've got K Rim, you've got uh, no television station. <laughs> anyway, you got all kinds of. But that's only the beginning. That's not even. The, that's that only scratches the surface. The one more important is the is uh, the water jug at work. Yeah, the coffee place. Hey, how's it going? Oh, not so good. Oh, did you hear about Sue? Did you? Why? So that's the, that's the media. The media is going on right there. Uh, the media is what, you know, you called up your neighbor. Hey, I'm feeling sick. Oh, yeah, I had that. Oh, but my aunt had that and she died. Uh, right? So that's the media. We're, we're learning things, and we're learning some, sometimes we're learning things that aren't so good. But really, really, when we're talking about the media of our city, we are. We're talking about every outlet that we hear things in our soul. So let's talk about some of those things. We hear from God, right? We hear from others. We hear from ourselves, And we hear from the devil. You don't believe you hear from the devil, then I'm going to tell you something. I got my first revelation. It was so cool. One of my first revelations about hearing from the devil was I was probably 10 years old. It was hot in Yuma, Arizona, and we had window air conditioners. And so I'm laying on my mom and dad's bed, uh, and I'm right in front of that window air conditioner in the middle of the day. And I'm just, my mind, you know, what? You're 10 years old. You, you don't think about anything. Men don't think about a lot anyway, but, you know. <laughs> I was just like sitting there. And all of a sudden, I thought, you hate your mom. What? Yeah, I thought. You hate your mom. Yeah. And I literally just instantaneously cracked up. I just laughed. I laughed and laid on my bed because Instantly, I understood that the devil tries to talk. Right. I, I just, it was ridiculous, because I knew I didn't hate my mom, I love my mom. In fact, I was probably on that bed just because it felt close to my mom. No, I wasn't a mama's boy. <laughs> just wanted to clarify that, but yeah, anyway, I understood, I had a revelation, an epiphany, hey, that was not from my channel. That wasn't from God's channel. And guess what? I can change the channel. Amen. Self control. Your thoughts are very important that you patrol your thinking because you're the one in charge. You've got the remote, man. You know, us guys, we have to have the remote control. In the olden days, it was the scepter to the throne. <laughs> But now we have the recliner and the remote. Yes, give me that thing. Right? My, my loving wife is so sweet, she lets me hold it. And then tells me, to the ID. <laughs> anyway. We have the remote control of the thoughts of our life. It's super important. Philippians 2.5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So I'm free, I'm saved, yeah, but now I want you to be like Jesus, because Christian means Christ's life. So I want you to think the thoughts he thinks, see things the way that he sees things. Listen, and don't immediately fear and be afraid, but instead hear and bring it through the filter of faith because God doesn't think like man. His, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he's trying to invite us up a little higher. Hey, come here. Come here. I want you to think like I think. It's time for us to police our thoughts. 
It's time for us to police our thoughts because I'm going to tell you in just a moment, I'm going to tell you something that's kind of, kind of scary about, about thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true. But I like that word, fix. Of course, it means, you know, focus. But of course, I have to use the other meaning of the word. Fix them. They're broken. Stinking thinking. Check up for the neck up. It's time to think different. It's time to, Bible says, renew our minds. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Anybody can be a thermostat. Oh, things are bad. No, oh, I'm sorry. Please rewind that. Anybody can be a thermometer. Anybody can say, oh, it's hot. Things are bad. The political situation is bad. I'm broke. I'm busted. I'm disgusted. Anybody can do that, but it takes a thermometer, a, a thermostat to change the environment, to change the temperature. Anybody can, anybody can say it's hot, but someone says, hey, I'm going to change the circumstance. I'm going to gauge it with my words. Okay. So, it says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure. Hey, cool. And lovely and admirable and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Those are the channels that we need to tune into, okay? Second Corinthians 10 says this. Speaking of law enforcement in your in, in your own soul, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4, 3, 4, and 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Listen to this. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every what? Thought. Bringing every what? Thought. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's what these are for. That's what these are for right here because when you have a thought that's fearful instead of faithful, it's time for you to throw on the handcuffs, say, come here, you thought, and make it bow down at the throne of Jesus because yeah. Jesus doesn't think that way. He's not afraid. He's not fearful. We have the responsibility to control our thinking. We have the remote. It's very, very important because when you start thinking like an unbeliever, Guess what you become again? When you start thinking the way you used to think before you knew the one who can change everything, then, then you have reverted back, and then that's why that's why Paul said to the Galatians who reverted back to religion. Oh foolish Galatians, what are you thinking? Come on, come back. In our minds, it's so easy to backslide. The grace of God is calling us to live an overcoming life. It's calling you to be empowered and authorized to recognize that just because you have a thought doesn't mean it's your thought. Some men are beat down by lust because the enemy has continued to just pour on their minds things that are from the external. But if you start realizing what's on the inside, then Jesus gives you authority over the enemy to where you don't have to be beat down by condemnation and guilt. Are you listening to me? It's so freeing to know, hey, I'm the mayor of my city. My city's going to be a strong city. My city's going to be a city that, that is economically strong. My city's going to be a, a city where, where all the inhabitants are educated. Yeah, my city is going to be a city that's spiritual, where God is king. Where we have a procession right down my city every Sunday or every devotional morning where Jesus comes walking in and he's king and lord and all the inhabitants of my city, every part of me cries out in glory to Jesus. That's the kind of city I'm going to be mayor of. Yeah? yeah? You're the mayor of your city. Okay. The second one is the business district of your city. Because we're talking about the mind. What's the second part? The will. The will is the business district of your soul. It's the business district of your soul. Now, I, had, I hesitated to talk about the will. Because did you know that there's, there's unbelievers who, who are strong in their wills? I mean, if you don't believe that, just look at an athlete 
or someone who's a bodybuilder. I mean, they get a kick out of it. They, they enjoy being in control of something. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that it can become bad. And the Bible calls it will worship. The, the, new, the King James Version calls it worshiping your will. When someone, you know, they're, they're working out or whatever, and that's their thing, man. They're so proud of it. Look at me. Excuse me. Look at me. <laughs> Look what I can do. Look what I'm in charge of. You pitiful thing. Why do you look like that? You're disgusting. <laughs> right? See, so, so when you're talking about will worship, we're not talking about like areas of control that we can be proud of in. But we're talking about yielding to the Holy Spirit to where, to where he's in control of our will. And we, we determine that, that what we do and what we don't do belongs to him. The Bible says here in uh, this, this verse in Colossians chapter 2, it says, Therefore, if you have died with Christ, there's that violent thing, again, from the basic principles of the word, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed, listen, they have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. What I'm trying to do here is trying to get us past the religious aspect of the will. Because I lived half of my Christian life believing that holiness was not doing something. Okay, we're gonna track with me in a second. I don't smoke, I don't cuss, and I don't chew. And I don't hang around girls who do. Right? So, if I went to the business district today, uh, Robin's not here, but if I, uh, if I went, let me see, I'm looking around, I'm looking for, Businessman. Chuck. Chuck. Okay, Chuck. What kind of business are you in, Chuck? What kind of business do you do if if Chuck responded to me, I don't sell drugs? I would be like, okay. Well, congratulations. Uh, but obviously you're not gonna help me because I'm not looking for drugs. I'm looking to have my knives sharpened and these, these tools fixed and that's what you, I thought you did. Oh, I don't sell drugs, right? Do you understand that Christianity, because of maybe a false concept of what it means to be holy, and I'm not saying that God isn't calling us to, to, to pull away from uh, smoke addiction, smoking addiction, or maybe gluttony, or I'm not saying that that's not part of our Christian development because it is. It is, but it's not our objective. It's not like, wow, I'm a Christian now, so now I don't drink a lot of beer. Woohoo! Isn't that fun? No. I can't get excited about you not drinking a lot of beer. I just, I'm sorry. If you're an alcoholic and you're and you quit. Drinking, I can get excited about that, but that's still not your end objective. Your testimony about not drinking anymore is awesome. That's the beginning, but that's not where Jesus is taking you. He's, he's trying to get you into business. He wants to get you into kingdom business. He's, he's, he wants to make you your city. He wants to see it prosperous in kingdom economics. So if you really want to know what kind of sacrifice... What kind of sacrifice that God wants? He's not just asking you to abstain from this or abstain from that. This is not the fast that I have chosen. Maybe you've heard this before, Isaiah 58. But the fast that I've chosen for you is to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you may break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out, when you see the naked that you cover him, not hide yourself from, from your own family or flesh, then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. 
The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you can call on the Lord and he will answer. You shall cry and he shall say, here I am. Okay, this is the business that the kingdom is into. The business that the kingdom is into is setting the captive free. The business that the kingdom is into is helping others, loving others, being compassionate. The kingdom business is not what you don't do. Okay, say it. It's what you do do. <laughs> Come on, we need some more do do. <laughs> Seriously. It's so much fun to start being active in the kingdom of God. You go from, from being a taker, gimme, 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 to being a giver. You start realizing, hey, I'm a person of authority. Instead of, you know what? Somebody should do something about this. Oh, I'm somebody. Say it, I'm somebody. You did you get that little analogy when you realize you're somebody you can help somebody sure. but when you think you're a nobody then somebody should help you you just you just graduated from entitlement I deserve give me give me give me to who I'm the giver I'm blessed I belong to the source anything that they need I can get because I I got connections <laughs> My city's powerful. My city, my city is strong. You came to my city, this is a city of refuge. This is a safe place. Because, guess what? Jesus has given me control and I maintain control. I patrol my thoughts. I patrol what my will is. My will might be to do something else, but now I'm a king or I'm a, I'm a queen. If you're a queen here today, I am in charge of doing what's right for the kingdom of God in my heart. Are y'all good? Told you it was that kind of message. Last last point. So we talked about your mind, your will. Now we're talking about your emotions. Okay, remember those thoughts I was telling you about? Your emotions are the children of your thoughts. Okay? Your thoughts got together and had kids. And those kids are called emotions. If you don't believe me, then just think of it this way. Your husband hasn't come home or your wife hasn't come home. They were due home 45 minutes ago. And you think they're late. Okay, that's fine. But then you think, <gasps> there's been a car accident. <laughs> Boom. Your thoughts just had kids. Right? Your thoughts just produce an emotion. And those emotions are deeper and more real than your thoughts. If you don't believe me, I'm telling you that once your thoughts get into the emotional stage, they're much harder to control. In fact, they're like kids at Walmart. You know what I'm talking about. They're on the floor, kicking, screaming. Ah, look at me, I'm having a bad day. Right? And we're over here, us old people. Ah, I would take that kid outside. And I'll whoop that, I'll whoop that kid right there. It made me get along, but I'll, I'll whoop that kid, right? Right? Isn't that what we think, you know? I mean, and the poor mom, she's probably tried everything. Well, maybe she hasn't. But we start judging mom, right? Check it out. Why is it, though, that we can always judge somebody else, and yet when it comes to ourself, which, by the way, it's called self-patrol and self-control? Because religion is always about trying to control somebody else. And Jesus didn't give you that authority. He didn't give you, he gave you the authority over you, 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 your, yourself, right? So, so when it comes to your emotions, it's time for us to discipline our emotions. It's time for us to, whoa, 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 whoa pastor, listen, I'm feeling this right now. So, 
Just because you feel it doesn't mean it's right. Oh, 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 I almost dropped the mic and just walked it. You know the whole mic drop? Boom. Yeah, you know that thing? Because we think if I feel it is real, if I feel it is true. I mean, the worst, the worst case, I shouldn't even go here, but the worst case is when someone feels something spiritually that doesn't line up with the Bible. Well, God told me, no, he didn't. Shut up. You know what I mean? If it's contrary to the word of God, God did not tell you that. But if someone thinks it in their heart and they feel it, they feel it, then it's hard to talk them out of it. In fact, you can't. The Holy Spirit has to do a work. And in this case, we're talking about you letting the Holy Spirit do the work inside of you when your emotions say something. Did you know that a, a city, a city, a, a person without self-control is like broken down city? It's true. You let someone who has a normal life, but you let them rage and fly off the handle and in, in rage and anger. In one moment, something stupid, foolish, detrimental can happen that will forever change their life. Right? So we're talking about controlling our emotions. We're talking about controlling our city and saying, okay, God, I, I want to live a life of self-control instead of just, you know, I, really, I don't really care how you behave at church. I want to know. I want to know what your wife says about your behavior. Because it's at home where Christianity is really walked out. Right? When your kids... When your kids go to school and they're so used to being yelled at that they walk down with their, their heads down, I can't do anything, it's possible that there needs to be revival at home. There needs to be someone patrolling, someone saying, hey, wait a minute, we don't say that here. We never tell someone they're stupid or that they, that they, they can't do something or that they, you know, they're bad at something or they're bad, period. We always call up the gold, right? Yeah. We always speak the best about our kids. So we're almost done. Col Colossians 3, 2 says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Luke 7, 35 says, wisdom is known by her children. What kind of children are you producing? Your mind is producing, your thoughts are producing children. What kind of kids are they? Wisdom is known by her children. Ephesians 4, 31, 32, last verse. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. Come on, see, just symbolically, I want you to take all that stuff and just throw it as far as you can for me. Come on, ready? Isn't that cool? Right? You don't belong here. This, this city, this city is, this is a godly city. So bitterness, get out. Anger, get out. Unforgiveness, ah, you're out of here. I've been authorized, deputized. <laughs> get out of here. This is a godly city. This is a city set on a hill. There's no slums here because when your thoughts, when your thoughts produce children that are not godly, then those thoughts have produced depression, and depression is a slum in the city of the soul. Listen to me. Depression is a slum in the city of the soul. But pastor, you don't know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through, but I know that Jesus is big enough to break that depression. He's able to break that depression in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Low self-esteem is a slum in the city of the soul because low self-esteem is a product of your thoughts that say, I can't do it. I'm a nobody. I'm nothing. No, listen, that's not humility. That's false pride. Break it in the name of Jesus. Be the deputy that you are over your own city. Get those thoughts out of you. I know the plans that God has for me. Plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Begin to preach to yourself. Preach yourself happy. Take control of your thoughts because it's time for your thoughts to produce a, a a soul that's well, the Bible says that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So when your soul prospers, when your soul prospers, then it's amazing. I told Stephanie a few months ago, um, 
Some, someone from our past, our distant past, had been hurt by an interaction that took place in church. And in, in truth, both parties, you know, there's always two sides to the story, right? But, but we, we went to them and said, listen, we're sorry. We take complete responsibility for this. You know why we did that? Because we're rich. Our soul is so, so wealthy. I'm, listen, Bill Gates has nothing. If you were talking about comparing his wealth to my emotional and spiritual wealth, he has nothing on me. I am so rich. I'm just, you say, Pastor, you're bragging? I absolutely am. God has been too good to me. He's been so good to me. He's been amazing to me. He's forgiven me when I didn't deserve to be forgiven. He's blessed me when I did not deserve to be blessed. He has loved me when I didn't deserve to be loved. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed from head to toe. I'm rich! My city is awesome! Because God is good. And my city exists in the kingdom of God. Now I'm going to tell you some good news right now. That if your city is outside of the kingdom of God, I heard that there's annexes going on right now. I did. I, I heard that that the kingdom is expanding. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yes, the kingdom is expanding. That Jesus, he signed some paper, nailed it to a cross and said, you could be a part, you could be in his kingdom. You, all you have to do is, is want to be. That's it. That's it. That's it. You don't even have to have a city council meeting. You don't have to. Just take counsel with your soul. Say, soul, I'm ready for change. I'm ready for change. I, I, I want to bring some equilibrium back into my city because there's been some there's been some disorder. The streets have been ran down with fear, doubt, and unbelief. But we're gonna we're gonna do some street cleaning right now. Have you ever saw those pictures? Please stand with me. Those pictures, Michael, you come in. Those those pictures where I believe it was in Chicago or someplace where the sanitation department went on strike for one week. Anybody ever saw that? Yeah. I mean, it's it's scary. What in one week, the streets yeah. were covered with huge piles <laughs> of garbage bags, broken, running out into the streets. It could be that your sanitation department's been on strike. It's time to clean up our act. It's time to let the Holy Spirit come through. Okay, Holy Spirit, what do I need to change about this way that I've been thinking? There's no worse deception than self-deception. That's the worst. When you believe something that's a lie about yourself, it's time. Self, self, listen. Self, it's time. Time to change the government of your life. Bow your head for a moment. Well, I was, uh, well, I was preaching about depression and about, about the product of our thoughts. I just, I just saw that there are folks here that you have, you have emotions that have been produced because of years of thinking. Years of thinking. Somebody here has a fear of even at times going outside. Like you, this, I just see it. Like you approach the door and anxiety hits. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me about somebody in the room. You don't have to lift, lift your hand but I feel very strongly that someone is struggling with this, this fear. 
And that's why you stay in a lot. You're here in church and I'm proud of you. The Holy Spirit wants to set you free from that anxiety. So we declare it right now, a loosing, a loosing. And we, what we do is we take that anxiety and we sit it down and we discipline it. Sit down, sit down. The Holy Spirit says that there's no reason to fear. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Who, who, who? No, no, no. I declare it right now that you're free from that. Jesus as we always do, I want to make sure if there's anyone here that wants to annex your city into the kingdom of God, you want to say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Just raise your hand quickly. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Yes. Thank God. Thank God for these that say yes. I like these people that they're in every single time. Father, we want you to be the Lord of our life. So declare with me, Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I need you. I want you. I don't want to be Lord of my own life. I let go of the Lordship of my heart to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're talking about self-control. That's the end of our series about, about the responsibility of every believer to bring your thoughts, your mind, and your will, and your emotions into alignment with Jesus. If you're here today and you do, do you want prayer for your thoughts, or maybe for actions that have been continued, to, to uh, pull you away from God or for emotions that have been tormenting you. Just, you're welcome to come up for prayer. The rest of you, bless you. We appreciate you. I love this church. Remember next week, uh, next week we're going to learn a little bit about, about what God's doing around the world. And then October the 2nd, do not miss October the 2nd. If you know any church members or any visitors, whatever, just let them know. They absolutely want to be here. It's going to be our missions, our missions kickoff. We're going to have fun. Uh, the kids are going to be doing a parade right down the middle of the aisle. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, October second. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you.